So, just welcome. I'm Ashley Saborski. Um, this is my talk called Fish Sticks One Designer's Adventure with Sculpin and Twig. Um, I'm just going to tell you about my story about playing with Sculpin, which has been pretty fun. Um, I'm going to start by kind of introducing who I am first because it gives you a little context about my experience going into working with Sculpin. So, first, I'm a designer. Um, this is kind of important because I'm not a beamer. I'm not, you know, I don't work in Drupal at all. Um, I just, at Palantir, we design um, in-browser HTML prototypes, and we hand those off to the feds who then make it Drupal-friendly. <laughs> you know, that's what they do. So I have never worked in a templating system before. Um, I've never touched Drupal at all. So that's, that gives a little perspective. Um, I'm a Palantir. -y. That means there's a lot of you here who are Palantir, but it just basically means that I'm in a great environment where everyone's like, try new things, learn about this thing, and if you don't get it, I'll help you through, and all this stuff. So it's a really great place to be and do fun new stuff. And also, I'm a noob, which is good because I kind of came in with an empty mind, no preconceptions. I wasn't like, oh, I don't want to work with X or Y or whatever. I was just, sure, I'll try something new. It's fun. So, like I said, no, no experience with the templating system and no experience theming whatsoever. Just kind of thrown into this. So that brings us to Sculpin. So what is Sculpin? According to the website, Sculpin is a static site generator written in PHP. It converts markdown files, twig templates, or standard HTML into a static HTML site that can be easily deployed. It's pretty similar to like your other static sites like Jekyll, Frozen, Noctopress, things like that. So why did we pick Sculpin instead of one of those other things that might have slightly more documentation? Um, <laughs> good question. So the first reason we did it was we wanted to have reusable design prototypes. Um, like I said at Palantir, we, as designers, we design something. Maybe we start in Photoshop or Illustrator, but then we move into the browser so we can show responsive and kind of communicate better with our feds. And we knew that D8 was coming, so and that's using Twig, so we wanted to find something that would allow us to integrate Twig into our process earlier on so we could have kind of more recyclable prototypes that will be easier to integrate into the final site. We also want, we're looking for a tool for smaller sites because at Palantir we do a lot of big sites, so we'd like to take in some extra projects to kind of fill in some of the gaps, so let's test out a few different smaller tools that will allow us to do that. So how does Sculpin work? This is my little infographic about it. So you can see over there, there you have your code, your twig templates, your assets, your markdown files, and you put those into your source folder. And then you do you run your command line command, which I'll get into next, and it goes through Sculpin, that little fish right there. And it comes out into your output folder, which is your site. It's ready. That's all, all your data is in where it's supposed to go, all your content's in the right places. It's pretty magical. So this is kind of a, just a brief overview example. I'll get more into this stuff later. But you have your markdown file with some YAML at, on the top. You call your layout first. You have a title, a date. Um, and then you just kind of have your markdown. You, that goes through a Twig template when you run your command. And it outputs something nice and simple. So the command that you actually use is called Sculpt and Generate. It comes with other stuff. You just type it into your command line. Like at the top one, scope and generate, and I have watch on in that example, which just makes it watch if there's a change. You can also um, put it up to a server, so you can play with it on your local host. Push enter, and in this one you can see, it's, you can see the scroll bar just generated a bunch of files for me and output a site. What are the pages? In what are the pages? Yeah, the colon page one, colon page two. Um, are those different type of files? Uh, so, those are probably, well, let me look a little bit closer. Um, well, there, it depends if there's pagination. I'm not sure where the one and two and three are coming from from that. This was an early site, so I might have been doing funny things, but there is pagination, so my guess is that it's running through to loop through to check for the pages, but it could be wrong. So this is the first site... I made with Sculpin. It's pretty nice, pretty simple. Basically the holidays were coming and we needed to have a holiday card or something to give to our clients or something like that. But we were getting pretty close to our deadline so we wanted, We were like, oh let's do something a little more personable, a little more cult like culture oriented. 
So we came up with this site. It's basically a homepage, which you're seeing here. And then those little cards are basically posts, which different palantiri gave to me. That was how to make something good. And it's just a markdown file that I've looped through. This is a loop that's listing the cards out. And you can go in the next file. This is what one of the posts page might look like. So pretty simple, um, not too complex of a site. Pretty much a perfect site to test Sculpin with because it was so simple. Another thing that Sculpin has that's kind of new is content types, which is pretty awesome. It's amazing. You can just, you, I'll go to the next slide. You can make any content type you like. This is a Sculpin kernel file. And in it, you can just say, in the green, you can see my different content types, posts, and profiles. You could add whatever you want, like news, you know, like what, whatever you want, authors or whatever. <clears throat> and then you just call those into your templates later on. So this is awesome because when I was working on the holiday site, they didn't have content types yet. And the whole time I was like, oh, I wish I could organize these a different way or wish I could have the author's profiles somewhere else and pull them in or something like that. How can we do this? And me and Steve were thinking of kind of like hacky ways to add like a YAML tag or something that will, you know, allow us to filter through or something. But it was just, you know, it wasn't working, working out quite right. And so Steve went and tried to make a content type module or whatever. I don't know what it's called. And um, he presented it to Bo, and Bo was kind of like, oh, actually, let's do it this other way. And then next thing I know, like two weeks later, or probably longer than that, he was like, there was a commit on the GitHub that was like, content types are here. So it was pretty cool and great, and I'm super excited about that. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the tweak I was using. Um, we'll start with like a basic template that I have. So a template, you, could, you I'll go to the example right now, but a use for this might be to pull in your header or footer or just to have your basic head and body tags pulled out. So here you can see I have the template. Um, it's pretty simple, it's just HTML and I have in green, you can see I'm calling in the page title, the double curly brackets are writing something and the curly percentage signs are kind of to do something. That's what the documentation says. Um, here I'm just pulling in content, but if we were doing something more complex, you could have it looping or doing all sorts of different things. So, so this is the markdown file I made that would go into that template. So you can see at the top, it's calling in the layout, which is the default file, which you can see this one's called default.html.twig. And basically, um, when you run the sculpt and generate command, it's going to read this file and say, okay, you want to go in the default template. And it's going to read through this and say, okay, well, there's the title, I'll put that in. Um, here's the content for the block, I'm going to throw that into there. And then that's what generates to your actual HTML file that's going to be outputted. So now that we have kind of a basic template down, what more can we build on that? Because you could just make a bunch of basic templates and that would be that, but then that's just not really saving you extra work because you're just making more and more templates. So one cool thing that Sculpin does is it has extended templates, which let you kind of build on your other templates. So for in, the, in this example, say I'm calling my default template first in orange, you're, I'm saying I'm going to extend that template and kind of build on it. And then I'm taking that block and I'm building out that and you can see I'm adding different variables like an image, a title, a subtitle, and I actually have two different content blocks in here. Um, you can have as many blocks as you want. You can have as many different um, variables as you want. You're, it's up to you. You just make up, you know, plug them into your YAML and you can call them up. And here I'm being pretty simple and I'm just calling it like, I'm not going levels deep, but you can actually like use your YAML and set it back and have just very complex systems. So this is my landing.html file, which is the, the template. And this is, would be the index file that would go into that. It's pretty similar to the other one, but to the other index file, but I'm building off of it. You can see I'm calling in the layout um, template at the top, and then the YAML has all the rest of the things I'm pulling in, and I have my two blocks, which I'm just filling out with the plain content. So after we have, we are extending one template, and we've built our basic template, how else can we work within Twig to get it to do more for us? So one way we can, one thing we can do is use an include, which basically calls like a, a template somewhere and just puts it in and it can use the variables from your page, things like that. So in this one we have um, a hero kind of include template at the top. 
and you can see it's just a simple div, and I'm calling an image title and subtitle. This is kind of a variant of the last example, but I'm just breaking it down more. And then underneath that, you can see I've replaced the old hero with an include. This is good if you're going to you know, reuse it elsewhere. You might want to call in a different image and a different title based on the page, something like that. So it's really reusable. Could use it for like a sidebar block, for maybe navigation, something like that, sidebar navigation. <clears throat> so here's the index file, or the, or the markdown file I'm using for that. I'm calling the landing in orange, and then you can see in blue, those are the pieces that are getting pulled into the twig, into the include template, and then I have just the plain blocks that are from the main template as it is. Um, to kind of explain this a little more visually and less code examples. Um, in orange I have like my base, my default template, and that's what all my pages are going to be built off. And that's best if it's most reusable because you're not going to be redoing things over and over again. You can just call in the same head and um, body tags, and if you need to add a script, you go add it in one spot or something like that. Granted, for Drupal it's probably going to be a bit more complicated than that, than that. but for just playing with Twig and getting in Sculpin, it's pretty simple that way. And then you can extend your default into a landing page template, which allows you to just build on what you already have and add uh, maybe some new variables or something like that. You can throw your includes in, and then you just run your content through the whole thing, and it'll output the magical layout that it is. Another great thing about um, Twig is that it can loop and list through different pieces of content. So this is like most commonly used for like maybe like a blog roll or a news list or something. Um, on um, a recent site we did, this is all like filler content, but we used one of our content types of profile and we looped through it in two different ways. So this is just kind of showing you different ways and we loop through the same markdown file. So in one place we've called up the picture and the name, we've kind of listed them out. And then in another, in the, in the contact us page, we've kind of called out their name, their phone numbers, and their email addresses. So we're using the same piece of content in different places, which kind of shows you the reusability. Instead of changing their name in two spots, you know, you just do it in one spot, which is really nice. So before I showed this, like in the beginning, and I kind of didn't talk about the generator, the pagination, and the use YAML data. And this is what's actually telling so say this is the landing page's markdown file. It's going to call in the landing page template, um, but then how will that template know where to get its data? And these are the things that are telling it, go look in posts. We're going to have... Is use post a content type? Yeah, okay. post is a content type. So if I did had like profiles, posts would say profiles, you know. And then um, you can put your pagination. So for this one, I had max per page is 50 items, but you can do you know 10, whatever you want. And then the generator is pagination. So this would be an example of like the included loop list. So I have you know my black tags, but then I have four posts in page.pagination.items, which is kind of where um, Sculpin's generating that content. So it's looking for each post, do this, and you can see it's saying you're going to write this item, call in the URL, um, use this image that's there, the title and the author. This might be kind of an example of um, like a piece of content that would be pulled into that. So you can see I'm pulling some of the YAML data that's there to populate those lists. And now say I have 50 of these. Traditionally, for me, you know, I'm not working in any templating system right now. I'd have to go through and copy and paste that item and plug in all this data and whatnot. Um, so this is what Twig does and with Sculpin. So on, the, on that side I have kind of what I already wrote, that's my include, and then on this side is what it outputs. So that's like the list of items over and over, and this list in my last project was like 30 items long. So it was really useful to kind of get things out there and make it behave how I wanted it to behave. Um, Sculpin also, also, or Twig also has conditional statements, which is really nice. Here's just a simple version of that. I'm just saying like, if the page has an image, then put the image here. You can also build on that having like an else statement, else put a placeholder image or something like that. Um, Twig also has filters, which are really nice to be able to control how your content looks. 
Um, so for example, in the first one I have, um, I'm writing page.author, so I'm writing the author's name, and I want to make sure that their name's always capitalized first and last. So I've added the title filter. And I've also added a slice, so you can slice through if you're l listing items, you're saying go through these items, but then only show the first four instead of all of them. Um, I also have a date format filter, and I'm also using a URL encode, which is allowing me to, um, when, when you type it, say you add something and you add tags to it, it's, for Sculpin, it's allowing it to output kind of a tag items list, so you can f go to like um, holiday site slash um, like Jingle Bells or something, and it'll have anything tagged with that. Another thing... So this is, I don't really know much about auto-escaping, but Sculpin has auto-escaping turned on, while Drupal has auto-escaping turned off inherently for security reasons. But we're trying, I guess I, they told me they're trying to turn it on. So, um, so that's kind of one difference where if you're taking this and applying it into Drupal, that's something you're going to have to read about the documentation that tells you how to appropriately use the auto-escape functions. So, so I've kind of gone through all of these different things that Twig can do, um, which is pretty awesome. It has a lot of power, and I've only kind of talked about the basic things it can do. I didn't touch on any tests, any operators. I didn't talk about most of the functions it offers, and I talked about maybe 10% of the available tags. Um, so you can see that there's a lot more power there. If you go to their documentation, you can see all the different things it can do. <clears throat> Um, this was a simple site that we were doing, so we didn't have to use much of the additional features that Twig has. But once you really get into it, you can kind of see all the different, um, all the different things it can do for you and all the different ways it can help you to make your website um, better and simpler to use. And then Sculpin brings that power to a static site, which is super awesome because you don't have to worry about if you're making a static site, you don't have to um, go in and change everything and worry about everything. You have all this power that Twig brings to a static site generator, which is great. So let's talk about why I think all this stuff is so cool and so awesome. So Sculpin and Twig are awesome because they really help me to focus on content and how it acts and, how it, and what it is early on in the project. So traditionally... Um, you know, I, if I'm making a site traditionally, I would just kind of see like, oh, I'll go check out what they have currently, and then maybe I'll say, oh, it might be better, say you have a news list item. They have an image, an author, you know, just standard titles and stuff. But when I'm designing right now in HTML and CSS, traditionally I'm just kind of saying, okay, I'll just put a title here, and I'll put something here, and I'll put the author and date here, and maybe an image. But there's not, nothing that I show that says like, oh, the title has to be X, or the image, you need to have an image always. I don't really, I'm not really, like, thinking about that consciously. It's more like I'm just making assumptions and putting those down, and I'm not annotating that or anything until later on far down the road. And so something like, oh, we made this news list with images, and then the client asks, oh, do we have to always have an image there? What if we don't have an image? Things like that. That's something that maybe I'm not thinking about off the bat, but I should, I should definitely be thinking about that. So I think Sculpin, working with Sculpin and working with Twig in our responsive prototypes will help us to either consider those things early on or it will start our conversations with developers earlier because we can talk to them and say, okay, what kind of fields or what kind of items are, is this content going to need? So we can then take those and how they act and integrate that as early as possible and communicate that to our clients. Um, I'll go kind of into an example of that. So we kind of had a brown bag recently at Palantir where we talked about this idea. And currently I would hand over some HTML and CSS and say, here's the site, this is what it is. If I was working with Twig and Sculpin, I could hand this over. And this is telling the developers or the feds a lot more information than what I'm currently giving them. So for example, if I handed this off to someone without any annotations or without any discussion, which that doesn't happen, but say I did, um, they would know that it has six fields, an image, a date, a title, an author, a subtitle, and a list of an array of tags. 
So they already know a lot of different things that I don't even have to add any annotations. I don't have to communicate to that, that, that to them either. And then if you look at the twig template that's underneath, you can, they can see, okay, this image is conditional. Not every item has to have an image. And the date should be formatted month, day, and year. And the title and author should both be title cased. So they're already getting a lot of extra information just on that little piece of, just on that little bit that I've given them without having to have another meeting and then looping back again later. Another great thing about uh, Sculpin and Twig is it allows for easy site-wide changes. Now, anyone working with a templating system right now might already be experiencing this, but for me, this is kind of a new thing. And before, if there were, there's a news list and they wanted to change that from the right to the left sidebar, I'd have to go in and change all that. Or if they wanted to move the author above the title for some reason, I have to go manually do that. Now, in with Sculpin and Twig, it's it's really easy. I just go into the template and I can just, you know, one spot, move it up, and then loop through it again, generate it out again, and everything is reflected correctly. So, excuse me. So, it's, it makes things really simple for me. I know I showed the loop in list earlier, and before I would be copying and pasting that same list over and over again, which is just, it gets to be too much. And there's all kinds of error for copy and paste error, missing a close div, or copying one extra, or something like that. So it's really um, doing a lot of extra work for me. And recently, actually, so I worked on two sites in Sculpin, and I was like loving it, and like this is great, and I was slowly learning more and more. And then I went back to doing traditional HTML and, C and SAS and CSS, and it was just like I was in awe about all the different things that I had to like think about, like if I change the head tag a little bit, I have to go to multiple pages and do that. And I was just like, oh, why, why is this so hard? I don't remember it being like this. And so I think I kind of took for granted all the things that Sculpin was helping me do and Twig was helping me do initially. And then when I went back, I was just like, this is so much better, so much different. I miss Sculpin so much. So it's pretty cool. It's definitely worth checking out. Another reason they're so awesome is both are simple to use and have robust documentation. Um, Twig has like a list of all the functions and filters and things that are inherent in it. And um, so you can just go online, you check out the different tags, the different functions, put them to use. Um, a nice thing about Sculpin is it does have uh, more robust documentation that's been updated more recently, but there's also um, a skeleton site that you can just pull down and you can test, you know, test it out, run it just straight from your computer, and it has, you know, basically has basic templates set up, it has basic tag structure set up, and things like that. So it's pretty simple to just pull it down and, you know, start poking around with have it, out having to worry about, like, building from scratch. So you can just, you know, it, it's working, it's functioning, and then you can break it and try to fix it and, you know, all those different kinds of things. So... There's a lot of ways to kind of get your foot in the door and get started, even if it's just reading, you know, the documentation for a day or pulling down the skeleton and poking around with it. Another reason it's great is designing prototypes and twig templates results in more recyclable parts for us internally. So if the designers are working with um, the twig templates, we can hand those off, kind of like I showed a little earlier of, you know, this is communicating so much more to everyone. And with D8 coming with Twig, we're hoping that it will be simpler to translate those from where we're at to what the final product will be. And this is really good because it results on the business side, it has less duplicated work. We're not doing something and then handing it off to a Fed who's kind of redoing it. Um, on the development side, there's less QA time from the designers because you know, there was not as big of a translation, so we don't have to sit and say, oh, actually, we didn't want this to be this way. If you look at what we had, you know, fix this this way, it'll be more like kind of a one-to-one -one relationship. <clears throat> and, I'm, and for my part and for the designers, it's really nice because it, has, it gives our designs like a higher degree of fidelity. We don't have to worry about, oh, we made this and everything's perfect and it's so nice and like, our lighting is perfect, our vertical rhythm is perfect, and things like that, and then we hand it off and something breaks or something gets lost or something like that. So 
at, at right now we're showing the client, here's what we've made for you, but then something could change along the lines that we don't have control over, that just gets lost or mixed up. And so it, it helps the clients, we're showing them one thing and we're delivering that instead of, you know, some kind of translation of that, you know? And, oh yeah, did I mention that Sculpin has content types? I can't really get over how cool this is. It's really great and how quick it happened and how fast we were like, oh, we really wish there was content types. And then we translated that and turned around and um, it was integrated into Sculpin. So, how do you create a Sculpin uh, content How do you, how do you create, how do, like personally? Yeah. Well, I'll go back because we're getting close to my questions anyway. It's a YAML file, it's just a file. Yeah, it's if a... You just, you just <laughs> yeah, look at the documentation. So this is the kernel file, which is in kind of um, a configuration directory. And um, at the top, I'm just saying sculpting content types. And then I make a content type. So I have posts. That's my first content type. And um, you're listing out. You actually don't have to have any of that stuff. So the desk category, is that a special thing? The what? Is it taxonomies and then you have uh, categories? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I can speak to that piece. Uh, out of the box, Sculpin comes with two taxonomies, which are analogous to Drupal vocabularies. Yeah. Uh, and they are tags and categories. You could add more if you wanted. Uh, but out of the box, Sculpin comes with those two. So this is saying that the post's content type can have access to categories. If we added tags to that list, it would have access to categories and tags. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how, actually how Sculpin is set up is you don't have to include any of these configuration keys. If you just put posts, it will make your type um, path. Your path will be underscore posts. Um, your singular name will be posts. Permalink will be pretty. That's all built in, so you don't actually have to specify everything, anything if you don't want to. Um, you can just put, I could just add authors at the bottom and it would fill out all those keys for me. So it's a little magic. Yep. So if I understand this correctly, um, every page is going to require its own markdown file. Yep. And is there a way to, you know, if you're prototyping, to import that into your Drupal database in one fell swoop or? Sounds like somebody's got rid of migration handler <laughs> <laughs> uh, to go from Markdown uh, to Drupal, which see, I just said get, gets jealous when I see that page up there because right now when you look at Google A, what it puts up everything in Meta is like one big chunk of variable data set you cannot touch from the theme there, which to me is a direct insult. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, yeah, I just want to get the shift to work on my <laughs> so I can play around with it. Um, you know, it just seems like this is way more like, it's it's defined way more as a, as a design prototype tool. Like mm -hmm. it, it seems like they almost like thought about how Google works. Or well, after you guys got a content type stage, it's kind of like, <laughs> hey, if I want to do a prototype for a client really, really fast, and I just want to, as a designer, I want to create this site. Mm -hmm. So the whole designing in the browser, because designing in the browser with Drupal on top of it, it's, that's kind of like, yeah, it's just um, yeah, it's just impossible. It's just, um, so you can kind of, kind of pseudo build a Drupal site mm -hmm. straight off the bat. That's really interesting. Well, so with a prototype like this, especially whether you're doing Twig or a JS system like Ember or anything like that, like you can pull in JSON data from your Drupal site, so the client can still manage the Drupal backend with other content, and your prototype, you can then just get the right data oh, and use that. that. So you can have a completely decoupled front end now. Like I've been doing that for the last couple of months. Shit. <laughs> That's why you want to make it a best server. There is so much that is possible once people are serving with your data. Exactly. Feeding into something like this. You know, or, or so my, that maybe, maybe, maybe the last six months of being touch live is, is, is we could just block him. So he didn't just say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no no sampling the engine in core at all. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Do you think we could just like, yeah, we're using this static layout for it? 
because we always use another layer of abstraction. Well, you're not looking. I mean, Drupal. What Drupal Jason has been in the quarter since six, right? Jason code. Um, well, PHP is supported as native Jason coding. Okay, here. but the Drupal output Jason. Um, oh, that that was just a trivial wrapper. Actual Jason structure. Okay. No, it's his new Drupal name. Okay. So yeah, I mean, so is there other things that come straight out of the box? So I mean, it just pretty much same thing if you use uh, I've used Hammer. Uh, which is an app yeah, uh, at Mac, yeah. Mac application that just generate pages as well, have like a own little pseudo Mac version as well. Mm -hmm. So it only puts out uh, just flat out HTML, there's no JavaScript crap in it or anything else, it's just. Right. So it, it relies on you using you know, whatever SAS, CSS, less, whatever thing you want to use for that. So, yeah, so a um, sculpt and setup will have a source directory, and anything in the source directory. A JavaScript file, a CSS yeah. file, we just move from the source directory to the target directory, and the specially named content folders that have those content types, those will magically move from their hosts directory to their pretty, pretty uh, path locations. So, what happens when you upgrade Sculpin? So, Sculpin, you know, new version comes up. Well, the content type upgrade broke. Everybody's previous sites. So, <laughs> but it's easy to fix. It's easy to fix that. It's super easy to fix. Yes, you just update the kernel file right. to yes. say content okay. text. Yeah, I, was, I was just thinking about you know, how the file structures were done, so you can see it with like you know, magic turbo command. And like, oops, mm -hmm. I broke everything. Now I can't <laughs> find my files at all because it's cleaned it up, still something mm -hmm. like that. You know how everybody experienced I think when they did that. Okay, on Drupal and Mac. Do you have the blog skeleton and so on? Um, I do. It might be kind of tacked up, but. Okay. I have a quick question about um, like the Markdown integration. Sure. Is it basically like as far as the content types? Like, um, you have your stuff at the top, which is like YAML, mm -hmm. and then anything else is pretty much mostly Markdown. Is that how it works? Because you have like the, the twig blocks in the, below. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it can be just plain Markdown like this. Like I have here, I have a Markdown Hello World, and it's going to output to that. But um, before, like in my, the early stages when I was first working with Twig, especially on the holiday site, I didn't really know how things were working out, and I wasn't doing a good job of kind of separating things. It was a quick project, and I was just getting used to stuff. So before in my blocks in this Markdown area, you could have HTML there and have that pulled in to your blocks over here. And it, that works too. So you can have classes, yeah. you know, whatever you want. Cool, because I'm kind of thinking about building a site, really creating that, and get like, how I want to figure out a way that we can gather all of the resources that we learn about trick now, mm -hmm. and how to use it inside of Google. And it would just be nice to use something else. Actually, we're not like, building on Google 7 because this is making people sad, and, but this is new and shiny, so it's fun. <laughs> and it could be eventually powered by Google 8. So. Yeah, no, that was the be where we could basically do some really nerdy shit. That's not fun. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And even if you don't think you'll be using Sculpin, if you just want to, you know, get familiar with Twig to kind of play with it and prepare yourself for the future of Drupal 8, you can pull this down and just poke around. And I guess if you want me to show the blog skeleton, I can, I have it. I have a dumb question. Why using Sculpin compared to uh, tons of like different Ruby static that uh some static yeah. so static like my, my personal blog runs on Jekyll just because I started it before I knew about Sculpin, but the one of the main reasons Palantir decided to use Sculpin instead of Jekyll for these purposes is because that every engineer at Palantir knows PHP. We don't have that same level of expertise nowhere near it with Ruby. Yeah. So it is possible to extend Sculpin further with Symphony bundles. We haven't done that yet, but we know that we could if we had to. Um, so that it was basically a safety net of, well, at least there's PHP involved here somewhere. If there's something we can't figure out how to do, we'll just get to the PHP and do whatever. The also, the use of Twig yeah. you know, is it's a shorter distance from Drupal. Yeah. Um, I was saying I'm using a lot of the static sites and it's and uses Twig. Not going like handy box or something. Well, there's other PHP based Twig templates, other prototype systems. So there's always something. 
Yeah. But yeah, if you wanted to show like actual code, that'd be interesting. I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, is it? Yeah. Oh, no, I can, I can actually put stuff over there. Let me sit down though, so I can. Let's see. Nothing showing up. Okay, good. Yeah, so I can pull up. Um, granted, I did. Doo -doo. Can I go over there? No, it wasn't. Yes. There I am. Okay. Sorry, I'm looking at two things now. This is tough because so there's lag on yeah, there's lag on this, and this is I'm too short to look at this. Um, okay, so I'm not sure what opened. So here's our so he okay sorry this keeps blinking too. So here's our source folder, which we've I'm gonna walk around the other side. Um, which we have, you know, we kind of broken it out and we have views contains all your template. Oops, down over. Um, here's my, here's the posts that come with it. They're just like basic markdown posts. This is really confusing. Here's our two templates. Um, with this one, it comes with a default template and a post template. Um, and then you have your page, your about markdown file. You, you know, we have SAS in here. And then you have your output folder, which this one doesn't have anything outputted. I don't know if I can show this. Let me try to de mirror my desktops. If you're using SAS, will Sultan Cherry also process your SAS files? Um, no. Or you have to have. Uh, Compass watch. Okay. So you have to just run that separately, or can you have the self yeah. generate command stop call? PHP can generate and just have to include the other one. Okay. So, all right, so you're seeing what I'm seeing now. So if we take this, uh oh, this is going to be interesting. I have not updated this skeleton. So, it's gonna break. <laughs> well, you can update we, it here. We know that for a fact. Yeah. And as soon as she off it will work perfectly right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oops. Actually, I'm just gonna. Think that will work. So this is just me fixing the old version of Sculpin to work, and I think it will work, but I guess we'll find out if I did it correctly. So exciting! <laughs> so then all we have to do is we're just going to open the folder up in the in terminal, and we'll write Sculpin. Up oh, and it worked. Hopefully. Yep. This is a really zoomed in. The okay. resolution on the projector yeah. is quite terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can kind of see what we have here. You know, this is a draft, draft, and it has next and previous navigation. And we can open up some of the files. So if we look in our source, if we want to open up a post, you know, you just have your, it's calling the layout post, title, some tags, some categories. Um, let me go in here. What's the title of this one? Happy birthday, Sculpin. And there's that. Then I can open whatever template this one's using, which is posts. And you see it's extending that default template that was in there, and it has a content wrapper. It's just simply writing the page t title right here. Um, and then it's spitting out the page block contents as raw. Um, so it's on the HTML or anything you can move markdown block and stuff. 
Yep, and th- yeah, and that's why that's marked on there. Um, and then it's running through. This is the pagination section. Or no, sorry, this is the category list. So it's saying if it has categories, great, write the categories out. If not, then don't do anything. And it's ha- you can see it's linking to, you know. Is your code, is your own code, is that a specific scoping thing, or is that a Twig thing? I think it's Twig, yeah. Probably a Twig. <coughs> code. Yeah, that's the part right here. And then down here, it's doing the same thing with tags. If there are tags, label tags and write them out. And if not, don't do anything. Um, and then right here, you can see kind of the pagination it's creating. Um, if there's a next post, which is, I think, Sculpin specific, Sculpin allows for the pagination, then you can have the next navigation that goes to the next post. And if not, or, and then if there's a previous post, go to the previous post. So to get figure out what, what's available for your post, mm-hmm. uh, template is the do you use dump or is there like a specific sculpting way of getting all the variables that's available? Um, for so let's say I want to figure out on that on a post uh, template what is what is available of data on this page. What can I what can mm-hmm. I play with? So I don't have to. It's like one of the old Drupal things that you open up a template and you, yes, you had no idea what was actually coming in there. So you mm-hmm. had to like call magic command and then it gave you like even more crap and yeah. it just made it like worse and worse. I know I've seen a GitHub issue requesting that uh, in Skullcrush. I don't know. Because there's just a dump command which is like right. what you look at and a little bit hard to like decode. Mm-hmm. So it's just if they have, it's one of the issues we're working on to yeah. how to how to make it beautiful for it. So, mm-hmm. so you can come in as a designer, but here's, here's my Drupal template, open it up, and I just give me all the stuff I need to work with, and I go to town. So outside of Ladybug or Kint or Trumo, yeah. if you have Xdebug, the dump command in Twig is actually formatted really well. Yeah. And we don't want to we don't want to expect from the devs to have yeah. One of the first use cases we wrote about uh, what we wanted the new theme there two years ago was like, being able to make a theme without having an ID. Oh, okay. That was kind of one of the demands we said. <laughs> like, we can't, we can't, can't expect people to, they come in with you know, Sublime Text, is probably the most advanced tool people are going to use. Mm-hmm. They don't want to have like, oh, you have to use PHP Storm because then you can do all this stuff. Like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like I haven't, you know, I've never worked with Drupal, so for me, my content was never that complex, you know, and it was just a matter of, oh, I can go look in in your your, um, posts and you can just open one up and, you know, here's my available variables. You can add whatever you want if you want to add an author, whatnot. And I think out of the box, Sculpin does your, organizes your files by um, date, but you can, you can change that as well. Um, so for this simple version, I didn't really need something like that, but you can add as much data as you want. The variables you have at the top for given content type, are those defined by the content type, or is it just arbitrary properties for each individual record? Um, they're arbitrary. So you can just add in a food or a bar or... Mm-hmm. I could say, like, author, and then Ashley Zaborski. Variables that will match the template. Yep, and then if I went to views and I, you could add like an if statement if author, you know, then write the author, Free. else don't put anything basically, and then yeah, you just regenerate or if you have it watching, it'll do it for you. So. So I noticed in your screenshots in your presentation they were HTML by Twig. Mm-hmm. And those These are HTML. HTML. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know why that is. Does it process both? Or? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think it'll process any file in that source directory that has Twig tags will get processed. Okay. So, like the Markdown files we saw were a mix of Markdown. They could be a mix of Markdown, HTML, and Twig. They're just all going to get processed. Okay. So you can define um, like local scope variables and only output them in that and these like, code block. Yeah, I guess that. So. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? That was pretty much.
Um, it won't put an error, it just won't populate it. So there'll still be, say, you have a paragraph tag within that if statement, or that you would have it within that if statement. It'll still have the paragraph tag, it'll just be empty. So like in one case, I was put, before I was using conditional statements, I would put like by and then write page author. So when I generated that out, it would just say by no one. Yeah, there was no, nothing there. So, you know, it doesn't break, it doesn't you know, go crazy or anything. But, it, it, I mean, it doesn't tell you that's missing either, which is, might be a nice feature, but. Well, it probably doesn't tell you because the quick debugging doesn't make it, right? Um, yeah, I don't know if it's enabled. Zachary was going to ask you, is there a way to turn on the debug mode in the big itself? So I don't know either. It, it'll give you errors if you try to generate it and it doesn't generate it. Mm -hmm. Well, an error in the sense that it doesn't exist, but it doesn't, like, throw away screen. Well, it doesn't throw a white screen, but when you try to generate something, like when you, because yeah, if it's when broken, you to, like basically compile it, it'll give you, it'll be like couldn't do it if you like really. Start to do it. I'll re-break it and show you if you want. So if you can... tell you why it didn't do it, it'll give you an error. It's not just well, like oh, it's fine, and then you look yeah. Like, it will, and I think in the beginning when we first installed Sculpt and there was some time zone error we were getting, and it spit that out and told you, but that was just when you're generating the site. So it's, it's index HTML, that's your basic template, but index uh, MD, that's the data you have on the index? Um, let's see what the difference is. This might have been a result of my hacking it. I think it came with index MD. So you can see this has, you know, a block, it's looping through things. Um, it looks like they're the same file. Yeah. So I'm not I, that might have been a result of my hacking, and I think it came with index yeah. dot markdown mixed in, and it has the YAML, and it will it processes. Um, if you have dot HTML, it still processes it. So, but you can see this is just a markdown file, but I do have this loop in here. Well, you um, have both in that code base. So, what is it, which ones? Well, let's see what it's doing. I warned you this was hacked. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it looks like it's outputting the index.html. Well, I guess we can't tell because it does output an HTML file. Yeah, so it's and, it's and it copies everything out, so you can't fake and just ask stuff and everything. It's simple. Yep, still there, and you can put in Sculpt and ignore to ignore uh, your so sass. Yeah, don't put all the crap here. With yeah, it's just like keep it clean and simple. Mm -hmm. Just yes. those black eyes know what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's true. Oh, did, was that a difference? So it must be using the markdown file then, because the output page has more than three items. So, good call. <laughs> else? That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's fun to play with, easy to get into, and, you know, with this thing, you don't really... It's not your own thing. You don't really care if you break it or what happens. You can just pull down a new one off Git if you break it horribly, which I did do a few times. So. <laughs> yeah. You gotta take the drill apart. <laughs> yep.